Anubis is one of the most visually recognizable of the ancient Egyptian gods. He was represented as a jackal-headed entity associated with the rites of embalming the deceased and the related afterlife thus suggesting his epithet as the god of the dead. And like many contemporary Egyptian gods, Anubis did have other aspects, but his core attributes were seemingly always related to the matters of death. For example, even during the first dynasty period, circa 3100 BC, Anubis was perceived as a protector of graves possibly to endow a positive aspect to the propensity of jackals who tended to dig up shallow graves. To that end, Anubis was one of the rare gods, who in spite of his ancient legacy, was not venerated in dedicated precincts and temples, at least according to archaeological evidence or lack thereof. On the contrary, the tombs and masturbas of the dead were seen as his places of worship, including a particular shrine at Anubian which contained the mummified remains of dogs and jackals. Suffice it to say, Anubis was often related to the rites associated with death, and thus he played the role of the deity who ushered souls into the afterlife. Over time, he might have even overtaken Osiris as the main A judge in the weighing of the heart ceremony as depicted in the scenes from the Book of the Dead. Now in spite of his visually striking features and frequent ancient artistic depictions that as we mentioned before, consisted of a black jackal's head, Anubis played almost no part in the actual Egyptian mythology. And while the color black itself symbolized both desolation and rebirth, Anubis was possibly also associated with canine or dog features but with grey fur. Thoth was an important god of writing, magic, wisdom, and the moon who was worshipped in Egypt from the pre-dynastic period to the Greco-Roman times. He was also closely associated with the principles of balance and equilibrium, which were often symbolized by his title Lord of Mat. And as such, Thoth was also portrayed as the husband of the goddess Mat, the deity of truth, justice, and the cosmic order. Quite interestingly, Thoth, the god of writing, had many origin stories in Egyptian mythology, with the older lore mentioning how Thoth was either born from the lip of Ra, or was a self-born, as an ibis, which lays the cosmic egg that holds all of the creation. Later origin myths established Thoth as one of the characters of the Osiris saga, wherein the deity was oddly born when Set accidentally swallowed Horus a seed. In any case, given his stature as one of the major Egyptian gods of balance, Thoth equally healed and aided both the parties Horus and Set in their epic battle. As for his physical attributes, Thoth was often depicted as a man with the head of an ibis. And considering his academic qualities, Thoth was widely perceived as the patron god of scribes, astronomers, priests, and some rulers like Thutmose meaning a born of Thoth. He was also credited as the inventor of the alphabet, mathematics, surveying, geometry, and even botany. Interesting fact about Thoth. Thoth was sometimes also depicted as a dog-faced baboon or even a seated man with a baboon's head. This was associated with his aspect of An, the god of equilibrium. Sobek also known as Sebek and Sobek represented the antithetical nature of the Nile its life-giving fertile scope and the dangerous reptiles that resided within the river. The combination of these two opposites brought forth the veneration of the crocodile god Sobek, the deity deeply tied to the Nile. To that end, Sobek was regarded as one of the creator Egyptian gods who rose from the obscure dark water of Nun to create the Nile from his very sweat. Another myth notes how he laid eggs in the primordial waters of Nun to create the very world Egyptians lived in. Historically, Sobek, the god of the Nile, was mentioned in the pyramid texts dating from the Old Kingdom period. But the crocodile god worshipped during the 12th dynasty circa 18th century BC, reached prominence, especially in the Fayyim region of Egypt after the construction of a pyramid by Pharaoh Senusret II. Incredibly enough, Sobek ni Pharaoh, 
possibly the first female ruler of Egypt, hailed from the very same dynasty. As for the scope of veneration, it is entirely possible that even live crocodiles were worshipped in some parts of Egypt as embodiments of Sobek. A hypothesis mentions how Sobek was revered as a form of appeasing the Nile, thereby alluding to his origins as a dark god. As for his depiction, Sobek was often represented as a man with the head of a crocodile that was further adorned with a plumed headdress and the 8F crown. Interesting fact about Sobek. Archaeologists have found mummified crocodiles of both adult and infant varieties in ancient Egyptian tombs, which rather alludes to the popularity of Sobek as one of the major Egyptian gods. In fact, Sobek as a deity was venerated even during the Greco-Roman times. Taurit, meaning a she who is great, was the patron deity and protective goddess of women and children a and thus was regarded as the ancient Egyptian goddess of childbirth. And interestingly enough, her veneration by the ancient Egyptians was possibly inspired by the ecology of Egypt before the early dynastic period, pre-3000 BC, when the locals observed how the female hippopotami staunchly defended their young offspring from harm. Over time, Taurit was also worshipped as an apotropaic god who had the power to ward off evil influences. To that end, it is known that Egyptian mothers carried amulets that were carved with the symbols or images of Taurit to invoke her protection. By the time of the New Kingdom, her likeness was also designed on objects related to femininity, like cosmetic applicators, jewelry, headrests, and vessels. The physical attributes of Taurit were certainly inspired by the observance of hippopotamus behavior in ancient Egypt. Consequently, the Egyptian hippopotamus goddess was often depicted as a hippopotamus who was pregnant and carried the protective sar sign. However, her limbs were strikingly feline in nature, while her backside curiously resembled a Nile crocodile. Aten personified the solar disk as visible from the earth originally considered as an aspect of other ancient Egyptian gods, namely Ra. And like other aspects following the likeness of the main deities, Aten originally a sun deity was usually worshipped as a falcon-headed god, thus mirroring the image of Ra. On occasions, Aten was also hailed as the silver disk, thus suggesting its aspect of the moon. However, during the reign of Pharaoh Amenhotep IV who was later known as Akhenaten, the Pharaoh proclaimed that Aten, as a solar deity, was to be venerated above the other Egyptian gods. Simply put, Akhenaten declared a monotheistic or possibly enotheistic mode of religion across all of Egypt, with the worship centered around Aten. Such radical ideas from the ruler had deep-reaching effects on ancient Egypt's society and culture. But such measures ultimately resulted in reactionary counter-implementations of the traditional pantheon system with the legacy of Akhenaten and Aten being intentionally wiped out by his successors after the defiant pharaoh's death. Even the royal city of Amarna, the cult center of Aten, was raised by the later eight traditionalists although some structural segments did survive to provide a historical glimpse into the royal city. Connected to the scarab beetle, Kepri was one of the rare Egyptian gods who was usually depicted as a man with a beetle head in ancient Egyptian funerary papyri. There was a symbolic side to the whole affair of Kepri worship with the entity alluding to the divine forces that moved the sun across the sky. This connection was derived from the action of scarab beetles when they rolled balls of dung across the rigorous desert surface while the young beetles emerged from inside the dung from the eggs laid by the parent. This is in fact related to the Egyptian word kepa, which roughly translates to at a change or a to create. In any case, Kepri was also considered as being subordinate to the more exalted sun god Ra, which on occasions also translated to Kepri being one of the aspects of Ra. For example, Kepri was perceived as the personification of the morning sun, 
while Ra was seen as the more effulgent midday sun. Interesting fact about Kepri. The people of ancient Egypt also regarded Kepri as one of the Egyptian gods of rebirth. This was possible because the Egyptians believed beetles appeared out of nowhere and yet were able to procreate, 